This is gonna be one of the craziest trips that we've been on. Going to Africa, looking for bass. We're doing this off the cuff. We've got about an 18 hour flight. We're gonna pick up a rental vehicle there. We're gonna hit the road. Africa seems like everything we've always dreamed about. Oh, it's a nice one too, Jay. Big grab it and red. We've heard about it all of our lives. It's time, we're here, we're going. You know, anything could happen. You just gotta keep moving or it will swallow you alive. There's a reason for me to live. This is the moment. Four wheel drive, mud, chainsaw, shotguns, fishing. That's expedition. Chris Owen's brain was taken apart. There's parts missing. Screws aren't there. He's lost. Have you ever been sprayed in the face with bear mace? Seven times. When I have my life in his hands, I'm scared. Out fishing with the drug cartel. Bad. In Salt Lake City, Utah. Guy that can really cut loose sometimes. What are you guys? But also really worry about what's going down. I'm a little apprehensive. I'm a little nervous. It's good to be cautious. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's serious. I want to come home in one piece. Brian. He's like the MacGyver on the trip. He's the kind of guy you want in a foxhole organizing the ammo. He's a researching machine, okay? He's got all the latest GPS, satellite, map technology. I'm not kidding you. That guy is Jerry rigged so much stuff. We're not going to pretend to be pro bass fishermen. Um, we actually really don't know what we're doing half the time. But we're doing it anyway. It's going under the tree. Trying to get me under a log. Oh, ow. Go, 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 go. That's what I'm talking about. You know, Africa is like one of those places that's been on our bucket list for the longest time. Nobody's really done the trip that we're doing right now. Though the planning can be horrible, literally, we have no idea what we're up against. We go for it. How many people do you know that just fly into Gabarone, get a vehicle, and just take off for, you know, a couple months? I mean, those people at least have a destination in mind. We don't. So we got this truck. If you look at this vehicle and it doesn't seem like good times, better check your pulse because this is a pretty rad vehicle. I mean, look at this thing. It's got Yo, the yeah. tents up on top. Yeah. Looks like it's got a little fridge yeah. action in the back, some coldies. It is completely self-contained. Everything that we could use to survive for weeks out in Africa. I think it'll work. I think it'll work. Do you know if it pops wheelies? Oh, what? So we hooked up with this guy named Hunter. I'm not really sure how we met Hunter, actually. Um, I'm not exactly sure how we even got in touch with this cat, but we did. You know, he was buddies, uh, well, he's not really buddies with any of us, you know. I got a buddy named Hunter. He went by the name Goat. An extremely wild man. He kind of found us, I think. This guy is one of the coolest guys I've ever met. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I never met you know, these guys in person. Spent some time in the military doing some stuff we're not supposed to talk about. What if I'm on a boat with one of these guys and I just don't like them? In fact, there's not a lot of stuff that we can talk about with Hunter. You know, Jay really stresses me out because he's so curious. If we're gonna run around with someone in Africa, Hunter's gonna be that dude. Excuse me. You know where any bass are around here? Well, not ass, bass. <laughs> Hopefully he's gonna be the guy that, that's gonna help us get to these places that we need to get to. Is he that guy? I don't know. I hope this is the right way, man. But then he starts talking about this golden bass. This golden bass is up in Botswana and the southern parts of Zimbabwe. Not a lot of people have heard about golden bass. Botswana's got a, a lot of golden bass. Between some bass fishing magazines from Africa and Hunter hearing rumors from homies in Africa, we heard tell about something called a golden bass, which Sounds extremely cool to me. It's golden and it's a bass. Seems just like the Geobass mission. 
We're not really sure exactly where to go for these golden bass. Other than the rumors are pointed up north towards the borders of Zimbabwe and Namibia. It's gonna be a long trip and the roads are not gonna be easy. Maybe the worst roads we have ever seen. Massive potholes, wild animals, domesticated animals. If you're not swerving for potholes, you're swerving for donkeys. Donkeys are everywhere. Donkeys, you wanna hit a donkey? Come on down to Africa. I mean, you know you're gonna see some really cool wildlife when you get to Africa, but until you get here, it is absolutely mind blowing. Hello, what are you selling? Chocolate? Oh, those are dried up uh, grubs or something, huh? You know uh, if there's any bass fish around? Golden bass? No. <laughs> it's all right. Well, let's buy a few. We gotta try this. If anything, the bass will eat them. You gotta give it to him or what? There you go. Uh, we're trying to find bass everywhere and, and we're trying to, you know, we're asking the locals, hopefully, uh, people around here know where we can find some bass. Do you know where some bass are? Trying to find some intel on where these fish might be because if not, man, it's gonna be like a needle in a haystack. Yeah, the river's too high, mm. it's too dirty. Um, even in the rapids? Um, even in the rapids, yeah. yeah. We're gonna have to go do some exploration on our own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 but it'll be uh, fast. Somewhat easy. It'll be, somewhat easy. It'll be easy. lost it in the sand a couple of times and now we've come to the end of the road. Looks like we came to a crossing called Johnson's Creek. The last time you tried to navigate across water we got stuck for what, five days? Yeah. I'm ready to rock. I like this kind of stuff. This kind of stuff is damn adventure. And if we get out here too far, we could possibly uh, just baptize that truck back there and sink everything that we've got right into the water and never get out. Hmm, been there before. We're searching, <laughs> trying to find fish. We had little or no planning coming into this trip. It's dying. I mean, we have our sat maps, we have a truck. You know, we're relying on local knowledge to find this bass. That's it. We heard rumors from the local people that there's bass that's further up north called emerald fire bass. Here's where we are. We're gonna come down to here. The emerald fire bass, also known as a nimbue, is an amazing fish. And most people think these things just don't even exist anymore. Uh, gonna ask the owners if maybe they have some boats around. Make it through. Yeah. So what you're gonna do is I'm sending you with two boats into a back hidden lagoon. Okay. That's we're the only people that use it. Nice. Um, uh, quite a bit further, mm -hmm. we've got another hidden backwater, but you're gonna go onto the main river so you can see the different system that's here. Crocodile right over there, just on the other side of the grass. It's a little unnerving when you're out here in uh, croc country. But it'll all be worthwhile if I catch myself an emerald fire bass. Where there's some hippos, you can end up catch big fish. All the green bass are way back up in there and we can't get through it because there's too many hippos blocking the routes to get in there. No, I don't think it's safe. Have you done this before? What if they're in the middle of the river? I don't like this. I don't like it at all. The lagoon that we had the big plan for today was blocked by a herd of about 30 gigantic hippos, which are allegedly the most dangerous animal in Africa. It takes more lives than anything else. I don't like messing with mother nature. You know, fishing for these emerald fire bass is, it's, I mean, it's completely different. It's the most technical fishing I've ever done. And the hardest thing is getting through these guys. They're everywhere. And they will shred your fly. Oh my. Trying to catch these bass, and uh, this is what we're dealing with all day long. Look at those teeth. Look at those Amazing teeth. tiger fish. It's a monster fish, is what it is. Tiger fish are a pain in the ass. <laughs> we're catching fish. I think it might be. I think it might be. But we're not catching the fish that we're after. Oh. Another tiger. There was bycatch. Bycatch is uh, something that you didn't mean to catch, but you caught it anyway. And I'd like to call it the uh, saber tooth striped bass. <laughs> Green bass. Green bass. Yeah. Hell yeah. You're not messing with me. Not. A nimbue, emerald fire bass. Probably one of the most beautiful fish in Africa. And this is a dream fish. I am pumped right now. Man, he came out of this little bitty hole like this big and just nailed that thing and tried to go right back in. Man, that was exciting. 
Fishing for tiger fish and emerald fire bass was incredible, but we need to continue on. We gotta find the golden bass. Is it all right to sleep in hammocks? Um, so I wouldn't sleep in a hammock, no. You know, he will come through the caps on. They come in every night. What you got there? Uh, I'm, in, I'm in the hammock tonight. A hippo kills someone every year and no one's died this year. So I was like, well, my chances are raising up when I'm a burrito at, at mouth level for hippos. It looks like a wedding dress, Jay. I like it as pretty as possible. By the time we start setting up camp, the sun has gone down and it's dark. And while you're setting stuff up, I can hear these, these noises in the background that are very low and growling. I was just sleeping in this hammock here. And was rudely awakened by a heavy breathing of a hippo on me. The hunters got me spooked. Everybody's like, oh, the thing that kills people here is a hippo. And it's right over there, and it's gigantic. And then I heard munching. I see that an ass about this big. So I rolled underneath the truck. And all I could say was, hippo. I'm still shaking a little bit because uh, you know, getting waken up by a hippo is not a fun thing here in Africa. Where did he, where did he come? Was he down here right by the bags? Yeah, he was right about, right about here. Hippo ass here. I split out of that hammock so fast. I would have got up, screamed, <laughs> ran through a tree and knocked myself out. <laughs> the mission this time is the golden bass of Southern Africa. Something that has been a dream. Gonna get to Gaborone or Habaroni or however they say it, Botswana. Gonna have to drive up yonder and try to find our first golden bass potential lake. This is the dream, we're gonna live it up. That's what we're here to do. We're here to explore and to try to find these bass. There's a lake that we saw just on the other side of the border that's 800 kilometers from, from where we're taking off. As far as satellite imagery says, we're gonna have to do a lot of bush driving. Yeah, we're gonna be driving over 100K only on dirt roads just to get to this first lake. We find a lake on satellite map, then we drive all the way out there to this lake only to find out that it's just sand. Another dried up river. I mean, this is a big river to be dried up like this. You know, this is a perfect example of a body of water that we found on satellite imagery that was full of water. Now we're here, and it's a dust bowl. The sand, nothing here. I don't think there's any fish here. <laughs> I mean, you look on a map and you, and you see, you know, these different bodies of water, but this is Africa. I mean, half of those bodies of water are probably dried up. There's like a spider web of trails out here and knowing which one to take. It's a crapshoot. The deeper you go into the bush, the roads get sandier and sandier, and you can't stop. Stuck in sand. What's gonna happen? Seems like the whole continent's made of sand. We can go 100 yards, that's it. And then we're stuck again. A long journey ahead of us. Looks like we're moving, though. I mean, we just gotta keep jumping from spot to spot until we hit pay dirt. It's just been fail after fail after fail. We're striking out. We're striking out a lot. And this is not what I expected. There's nothing here. This is, it feels sterile. We have gone every possible area that you could ever imagine in Botswana, Namibia, Zimbabwe, and part of Zambia. We've got no other option than to keep searching. It feels like everything's dead and, and I, don't, I don't know what to tell you guys. You know, the morale of the team is definitely at an all time low, I think, just because you know, we're having such a a hard time finding these fish. It's not easy. The hunter got on the phone this morning, he made some phone calls to some homies that he grew up with. Started asking him some questions um, about, you know, possible bass lakes that we could go back into Botswana to fish. The lake sounds promising and we really have nothing to lose at this point. So we're gonna go check it out. You go into the grocery store to pick up supplies, beer, food, and what do you see in the aisle? Dude, we got I just walking around this grocery store and happened upon this, and I thought it was kind of funny. Every once in a while, they have yaki hair, which is a hair weave. I flipped it over, and I'm like, wow, that'd be some really good fly material. It'd be awesome. <laughs> Take a look at it, so weird in the checkout. We've got black, and we've got this one. We were hoping to find some olive, but apparently olive's just not in around here, so. It looks like the perfect material for tying up big bass flies. That's what we're gonna use to tie up our fly. The game changer. Game changer. This was the game changer. That was the birth of the swamp mamba. And that's what's gonna do it. Look at that freak of nature. Got a little rattle in it too. The swamp mamba. Ugly.
we are in the middle of nowhere, Botswana. We're on a lake that's never been fished by Americans. And that just made my morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's our last day out here. It's now or never. Last chance summer dance, Africa style. Wrote a rap about it, goes like this. Uh, no, I didn't write a rap about it. <laughs> We've got to hit this thing hard. We're going to try and go to the mouth of the river that comes into, into the lake. There's all these trees that are submerged and all you really see are the tops of them. And um, you know, this fly is incredibly difficult to cast. I mean, to, to have any sort of accuracy with this fly is nearly impossible. You do certain moves like the grenade, the grenade cast, which you, you, is with your left hand in cooperation with your right hand. I'm about to catch a fish cast. Oh, I'll show you that one next. You know, there's one spot that we really haven't been targeting yet, and that's right in the epicenter of where these tree branches come out. But you got a foot variance of where they'll hit and where they want. If you hit it dead center in the middle of the trees, you gotta wait two, maybe three seconds and give it a little swamp donkey jerk. I mean, these fish are hungry. They gotta eat no matter what color this water is, you know? So we're throwing 40 pound tests for our leaders, just straight 40 to the fly. That thing's nasty. We found what we think is the mega bass hangout. I just saw a massive, massive explosion go off. That was a big, big fish. Brian just busted, busted a fish off on 40 pounds. Like, how big can the fish really be? This is 40 pound, dude. <laughs> that just makes me think I'm going to 60. Yeah. Oh, that, that was a grab. That, that was a grab. There's a player in there. The fish are waking up finally. <laughs> We're basically just trying to lob it up into the sticks. That might have been a stick. You get that black fly in there to cast that silhouette, dude, they just can't resist it. Once we started doing that, everything changed, and we started catching bass, and we started catching huge bass. <gasps> Pat, we just hit this tree line, and it is one fish after another. We're throwing just cast after cast after cast. So it's just an explosion. I've never seen, never seen bass hit this hard. Dude, they just slam it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely slam it. If you give it an inch, it'll take a foot. No way, dude. That's a big bass dude, right dude. there. If you give it a foot, it'll step on it. Oh, he's going down again. He's going down again. Watch out. Hey, there. There's crocodiles everywhere. We just passed an island that had like 12 of them. Yeah, he's definitely huge. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh God, we got one. It's about time. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> Kitchen bass on the edge of the Kalahari Desert. <laughs> First cast. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Wham! Beast. Woo! Yeah! Woo! 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 Oh. That feels real good. <laughs> <laughs> Botswana's got some hawks. This is a bass fisherman's dream right here. Africa has totally thrown down. I mean, it's been tough finding this lake and finding these fish, but we found them. Oh, nice fishing in Africa. Yeah, buddy. It done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dick's bass my life, man. That's a bad ass. I'm excited. I like Africa a whole stacks of bunches, man. <laughs> In the world of bass fishing, I mean, how big is that? It's got to be the seventh wonder. This is bass heaven. Pretty positive. This is as good as it gets. <laughs> African bass, man. Who would have guessed? What's it doing in there? He's crawling around. See it? Can you tell what kind of bug it was? <gasps> It looked like it was... Oh, he's moving, man. Reverse thorned into your eardrum. Oh, buddy. With long antennas. <laughs> Does it sound like he's laying eggs in there? We're gonna try to smoke him out with some cigarette tobacco. It's a spider! Come out? Come out? Yeah. He just crawled all over my face. Went boom. I was like, ah! 